guys! <laughs> Welcome to this video where I will read the chapter 9 and 10 of The Little Prince of Antoine de saint Exupéry. During the last chapter, we discovered that um, the little prince had a relationship with a flower on his planet and also the narrator uh, draw a muzzle for um, the sheep so that the sheep won't be able to eat the flower. What would happen next? Let's discover together. Okay, chapter nine. I believe that for his escape, he took advantage of the migration of a flock of wild birds. On the morning of his departure, he put his planet in perfect order. He carefully cleaned out his active volcanoes. He possessed two active volcanoes, and they were very convenient for heating his breakfast in the morning. He also had one volcano that was extinct, but as he said, one never knows. So he cleaned out the extinct volcano too. If they are well cleaned out, volcanoes burn slowly and steadily without any eruptions. Volcanic eruptions are like fires in a chimney. On our earth, we are obviously much too small to clean out our volcanoes. That is why they bring no end of trouble upon us. The little prince also pulled up with a certain sense of dejection the last little shoots of the bayou bass. He believed that he would never want to return. But on this last morning, all these familiar tasks seemed very precious to him. And, he, and when he watered the flower for the last time and prepared to place her under the shelter of her glass globe, he realized that he was very close to tears. Goodbye, he said to the flower, but she made no answer. Goodbye, he said again. The flower coughed, but it was not because she had a cold. <clears throat> I have been silly, she said to him at last. I ask your forgiveness. Try to be happy. He was surprised by this absence of reproaches. He stood there all bewildered, all bewildered. The glass globe held arrested in midair. He did not understand this quiet sweetness. Of course, I love you, the flower said to him. It is my fault that you have not known it all the while. That is of no importance. But you, you have been just as foolish as I. Try to be happy. Let the glass globe be. I don't want it anymore. But the wind, my cold is not so bad as all that. The cool night air will do me good. I am a flower. But the animals, well, I must endure the presence of two or three caterpillars if I wish to become acquainted with the butterflies. It seems that they are very beautiful. And if not the butterflies and the caterpillars, who will call upon me? You will be far away. As for the large animals, I'm not at all afraid of any of them. I have my claws. And naively, she showed her four thorns. Then she added, Don't linger like that, like this. You have decided to go away. Now go! For she did not want him to see her crying. She was such a proud flower. Chapter 10. He found himself in the neighborhood of the asteroids 325, 326, 327, 328, 329, and 330. 
he began, therefore, by visiting them in order to add to his knowledge. The first of them was inhabited by a king, clad in a royal purple and ermine. He was seated upon the throne, which was at the same time both simple and majestic. Ah, here is a subject, exclaimed the king, when he saw the little prince come in. And the little prince asked himself, how could he recognize me when he had never seen me before? He did not know how the world is simplified for kings. To them, all men are subjects. Approach, so that I may see you better, said the king, who felt consumingly proud of being at last the king over somebody. The little prince looked everywhere to find a place to sit down, but the entire planet was cramped and obstructed by the king's magnificent ermine robe. So he remained standing upright, and since he was tired, he yawned. It is contrary to etiquette to yawn in the presence of a king, the monarch said to him. I forbid you to do so. I can't help it. I can't stop myself, replied the little prince, royally embarrassed. I have come on a long journey, and I have had no sleep. Ha, ah, then, the king said, I order you to yawn. It is years since I have seen anyone yawning. Yawns, to me, are objects of curiosity. Come now, yawn again. It is an order. That frightens me. I cannot any more murmured the little prince, now completely abashed. Hmm, <laughs> replied the king. Then I, I order you sometimes to yawn and sometimes to... He sputtered a little and seemed vexed. For what the king fundamentally insisted upon was, upon was that his authority should be respected. He tolerated no disobedience. He was an absolute mourner. But because he was a very good man, he made his orders re reasonable. If I ordered a general, he would say, by way of example, I've, if I ordered a general to change himself into a sea bird, and if the general did not obey me, that would not be the fault of the general. It would be my fault. May I sit down? Came now a timid inquiry from the little prince. I order you to do so, the king answered him, and majestically gathered in the fold of his ermine mantle. But the little prince was wondering, the planet was tiny, over what could this king really rule? Sire, he said to him, I beg that you will excuse my asking you a question. I order you to ask me a question the king hastened to assure him. Sire, over what do you rule? Over everything, said the king with magnificent simplicity. Over everything? The king made a gesture which took in his planet the other planets and all the stars. Over all that? asked the prince. Over all that, the king answered. For his rule was not only absolute, it was also universal. And the stars obey you? Certainly they do, the king said. They obey instantly. I do not permit insubordination. Such power was a thing for the little prince to marvel at. If he had been master of such complete authority, he would have been able to watch the sunset, not 44 times in one day, but 72, or even 100, or even 200 times without ever having to move his chair. And because he felt a bit sad as he remembered his planet which he had forsaken, he plucked up his courage to ask the king a favor. I should like to see a sunset, 
do me that kindness, order the sun to set. If I ordered a general to fly from one flower to another like a butterfly, or to write a tragic drama, or to change himself into a seabird, and if the general did not carry out the order that he had received, which one of us would be in the wrong? The king demanded. The general or myself? You, said the little prince firmly. Exactly. One must require from each of one the duty which each one can perform. The king went on. Accepted authority rests first of all on reason. If you ordered your people to go and through and throw themselves into the sea, they would rise up in revolution. I have the right to, to require obedience because my orders are reasonable. Then my son said, the little prince reminded him, for he never forgot the question once he had asked it. You shall have your sunset, I shall command it. But according to my signs of government, I shall wait until conditions are favorable. When will that be? inquired the little prince. Hmm, hmm, replied the king. And before saying anything else, he consulted the bulky almanac. Hmm, hmm, that will be about, about, that will be this evening, about 20 minutes to eight. And you will see how well I am obeyed. The little prince yawned. He was regretting his last sunset. And then, too, he was already beginning to be a little bored. I have nothing more to do here, he said to the king. So I shall set out on my way again. Do not go, said the king, who was very proud of having a subject. Do not go. I will make you a minister. Minister of what? Minister of, of justice. But there is nobody here to judge. We do not know that, the king said to him. I have not yet made a complete tour of my kingdom. I am very old. There is no room here for a carriage. And it ties me to walk. Oh, but I have looked already, said the little prince, turning around to give one more glance to the other side of the planet. On that side, as on this, there was nobody at all. Then you shall judge yourself, the king answered. That is the most difficult thing of all. It is much more difficult to judge oneself than to judge others. If you succeed, in judging yourself rightly, then you are indeed a man of true wisdom. Yes, said the little prince, but I can judge myself anywhere. I do not need to live on this planet. Hmm, <laughs> said the king. I have good reason to believe that somewhat, that somewhere on my planet there is an old rat. I hear him at night. You can judge this old rat. From time to time, you will condemn him to death. Thus, his life will depend on your justice. But you will pardon him on each occasion, for he must be treated thriftily. He is the only one we have. I, replied the little prince, do not like to condemn anyone to death. And now I think I will go on my way. No, said the king. But the little prince, having now completed his preparation, his preparation for his departure, had no wish to grieve the old mon monarch. If your majest majesty wishes to be promptly obeyed, he said, he should be able to give me a reasonable order. He should be able, for example, to order me to be gone by the end of one minute. It seems to me that conditions are favorable. As the king made no answer, the little prince hesitated a moment. Then, with a sigh, he took his leave. I make you my ambassador, the king called out hastily. He had a magnificent air of authority. The grown-ups are very strange, 
the little prince said to himself as he continued on his journey. And we finished for this video. I hope that you enjoy, just like me. I can feel that also that um, I'm making good progress in pronunciation and feeling a little bit more um, comfortable uh, when I speak English. Um, I also learned uh, pronunciation of some words, so I would like to share that with you, like dejection. So Jack, at the, um, the sorry, the highlight, the Jack, not dejection, but dejection, reproaches. So here is reproaches, the it, and not reproaches, reproaches. So at the end, it's really just like an S. Be wired. So it's not be wider, it's be wired. Well, anyway, I precise that <laughs> I learn on Google to translate and um, just imitate what they are saying. So maybe it's not, I don't know, the way that you would pronounce it. That's okay. Caterpillars. So caterpillars, not caterpillars. Caterpillars. Linger. The particular reti here is we said g and not dr. At first, I would pronounce it linger just like ginger, but it's linger. Thoroughly, not so roughly, thoroughly. Embarrassed, embarrassed, not embarrassed, embarrassed. Abashed, not abashed. Oh, no, it's more like, just like obashed or something like that. I think it's kind of a British accent, maybe. O obashed. Fundamentally, 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 and not fundamentally. Hastened, and not hasten it. Hasten, so just like we do not pronounce the t. Hastened and not not hastened, just like listen and not listen. Almanac, 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 and thriftily, 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 and not thriftily, thriftily. Right, great. <laughs> I'm happy um, of doing that. Um, I don't know how useful this video is for you, but at least it's very useful for me. And I got a very much pleasure of doing that because uh, I'm practicing English, speaking English and I'm learning at the same time. And maybe you will learn the same time with me. So it will be a pleasure for me. Do not hesitate to comment on this video. Thank you very much. And I say you, to the, um, see you to the, in the next video. Say you goodbye.